happening? How are you doing? How has your week been? I hope you're excited. I hope you're running here. I hope you're telling someone about today. I hope you are expectant about yeah. today. If you are not expectant about today, you are the only one. You are the if only you one. are not in the room, you, you are, are the, the only, only one. one. <laughs> if you have not yet shared the link, you, you are, are the, the only, only one. one. With that said, go ahead and share this link because. Oh yes, a bucket Tell load of someone. value is going to be downloaded this morning and it's coming straight out of Worship Harvest Nadia and today in a special way we have Worship Harvest Mokono Central in Yay! the building. In the building here, so wherever you are, run to your location. Nalia, if you're in Chaluajala, come now. Now is a good time. Your seat is ready for you. Getting is ready for you. That is true. Just you have to come here to them now, now. Mm -hmm. And also in the building, we also have Worship Harvest Jogo. Yay! We have Worship Harvest. Worship Harvest, Harvest Jogo. Jogo, are you in the building? Worship Harvest Jogo, are you in the building? <laughs> they are in the building. Guys, this is already beautiful. Now, even before we get into what's going to be served today on Business Garage, today we have something big dropping something later big. on in the day. Oh, we yeah. have the Moses Mokisa and Friends concert Moses. happening this evening. Yeah. <laughs> Please come. If uh, you're not planning to come, you are the only one. Yeah, if, if you're not into that chips, chaps, chili some, you have to be here. You have if you're to be into here. it, you have to be you here. You have to be here. It's going to be beautiful. It's what uh, hot. It's <laughs> Apostle Moses Mokisa and Spicy. friends. And it's a concert that is going to be just beautiful. Music, mm. uh, entertainment, Energy, fun, connection. Dancing, hey. joy, just all the good things in it, one. Lots of joy. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, joy. joy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Business Garage last week. Oh yeah, it? man, last week. Uh -huh. I mean, did you enjoy Business Garage last, last week? week? If you did, go enjoy it. Just, just let us know if you did in the mm. comments because because we did enjoy it here. We did enjoy it. What was here last week? Uh, last week we had Robert Kabushenga, the former CEO of uh, New Vision, and now the leader of uh, 360 Mentor Africa, uh, and Rogeo Rogeo coffee fam now in a more special way this week Yay. to take it uh, to take it a notch higher uh -huh. we are having julius kabogo who is a <laughs> oh yes we have julius kabogo who is our leader of hmc hmc is harvest multi-purpose cooperative and as he says if you are not part of hmc you are the only one. You are the only one. Oh, yes. Uh, through the leadership of Julius Kabugo, HMC has grown to a billion shillings worth, I mean, of investments and savings done by people. Hey, yes. So, he knows or oh, he has harnessed the power of cooperatives and he has picked up on that wisdom and he's going to share that with us here on Business Garage. You know, cooperatives have been performing very well in Kenya and Julius Kabogo is going to show us why we really need to embrace the same because he has helped HMC grow to what it is. I mean, billions of Ugandan shillings. Come on now. So if you have not yet shared the link, you are the only one. Go ahead and share it right now. Let all your people know. Uh, let all your people, friends in investment, investment groups know. Let all your people with whom you are saving money, but it never grew your and it went. <laughs> lecturer, yeah, share the link. If you ever saved money and used it for shopping for Christmas, yet you saved it all through the year, go ahead and share this link with other friends with whom you are doing that. Yeah. It's going to be ballistic. It's going to be beautiful. Yeah. Hey, if you're not in the room and yeah, you're in the areas one. of Nadia, uh -huh. Chirika, Chaliwajara, Chambogo, Banda. Banda, Chira, Chira uh, Chijabijo, Mbalwa, Chitichifumba. <laughs> if you're not in the room, <laughs> come into the room right away because this is awesome. Mm. And right about now, yeah, guys, welcome with us. This amazing music team to, to start us off with our praise and worship. Yeah, in five, four, three, two, one, let's go. Oh, yeah, let's go. Yo, 
Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Business Garage. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. Yeah. A good day to be alive. Let us worship our God together this morning. Would you put your hands together like that?
morning, oh Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. We lift our hearts to you. We lift our hands to you. You are worthy and there is none like you. There is none like you in all the earth. King of kings and Lord of lords, we worship you. You
four elders fell down and before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on earth. Church, why don't you go ahead today and use your instrument, which is your mouth, which is your hand clap, which is your feet, to worship God and tell him, Father, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. You are high and lifted high. There is no one like you. Come on, church. Use your instrument. Use your praise. And sing a new song this morning to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, the one who redeemed us out of every tribe, out of every nation, out of every people. He has seen us worthy. He has restored us. He has lifted us up. Now we reign like priests and kings. We are not orphans. We are chosen. We are loved. We are above and not beneath. We are soaring high like eagles. Oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Thank you Jesus for lifting us. For restoring us, for redeeming us, for loving us. In Jesus' name, come on, church, with a loud shout and a praise. Lift up a king of kings and thank him for loving us this morning. He is worthy and nobody else is. And we love him for that. Amen. Come on, let me hear loud and say amen. Amen. Oh, yes, you are very welcome. Thank you, band. Thank you, worship team, for that excellent session. We are grateful. Why don't you join me to appreciate them? Isn't it amazing what they do? It's amazing. You are very welcome. Why don't you turn to your neighbor? They might have come in while you're worshiping, praying, and welcome them in a very special way. If you came with them, I give you full permission to hug them where you are online, at a location, at a hosting center on Spirit, on Harvest Radio. You are very, very welcome. You are very welcome here in the house. We are very excited that you've joined us for Business Garage. You may go ahead and take your seats. Who do we have in the house today? I can't hear you. <laughs> Oh yes, worship Harvest Mukono Central. Let me hear you make some noise. Welcome to Business Garage. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Mukono to join us this morning. The people who have stayed at Mukono Central, we send you greetings. We are very excited. You sent us a delegation this morning that are very excited. Pastor Paul and Pastor Roxy, you're very welcome to Business Garage. Pastor Chris is in the house as well. Welcome to Business Garage. You are very welcome. Now, in a very special way, I want us to welcome a special group of people. One that we expect every single Sunday. If you're here and you're a first-time guest, you're joining us for Business Garage online or here in the house or at a location for the very first time. We don't want to embarrass you. What we do best here is welcome you in a very special way. Why don't you just put up your hand here in the house and the guest experience team will run to you. Anybody here for the very first time? Of course, she's here. Oh yes, another person is right there. Guest experience team, I don't see you running to these people. Neighbors, you know what to do. Bless these people with some gifts and some good smiles. You are very welcome online, wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining us. You're probably in your business and you've tuned in. You're at work, you're in a taxi going somewhere and you've tuned in for Business Garage. You've made the right choice and your expectation will not be cut off. Oh yes. So neighbors, why don't we welcome our first time guests for once again with another hand clap. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming at that location online. We are grateful that you joined us. After the service on my right, there's a special place set up for first time guests. And behind here, there's a business lounge for all business people. Now, if you've not yet got into the habit of coming here at Worship Harvest Nalia to be in the studio audience, you better do it. Why? Because your next contact, your next opportunity, your next partner could be in this room. So every after business garage, we have business lounge behind this stage where business people connect. So next Sunday, it's a deal. Make it here at Worship Harvest Nali and join us here in the studio audience so you can be able to connect with other like-minded people. Amen? 
All right. I know you came in the presence of the Lord with an offering. Did you? Did you? Are you sure? Are you excited about giving to the Lord? I like it. I like it. But before we do that, we forgot to tell our first time visitors, guests who they are, who we are. Who are we? We are a movement of the gospel, discipleship, and mission. And we are committed to the sole purpose of catalyzing spiritual, social, and economic renewal in our immediate communities. And as a result, the world, and we believe that church begins on Monday and Sunday is garage time. Pew, pew. Oh yes, this morning we are here to catalyze economic renewal. And so we're going to be equipped with all the knowledge we need to run kingdom businesses that are not only affecting our families, because we don't run FMF businesses anymore, but are going to impact the world. So if you've not yet shared the link, I want to warn you, go ahead and share the link because value is about to come to us this morning. All right, now let's get out our offering and our tithe. Are you ready? Are you ready? We are going to worship God with our giving. The bugs are coming around. You can ask for an envelope and sleep in your horizon build, sleep in your buy the land, sleep in your offertory, whatever it is that you carried in the presence of the Lord, just put it in right there. And if you're online and you'd like to participate in this worship, it's very simple. Just follow these numbers, 778 And if you'd like to use Airtel, 758 418. If you'd like to use our merchant codes, MTN Momo Pay code is 148722. If you'd like to use Airtel Pay, the code is 116032. If you're overseas and you'd like to participate, you're welcome as well. Just go to our website and type in worshipharvest.org forward slash give. Whatever it is that you're sending will be well received. Why don't we give thanks as we give? Father, we thank you because whatever we have in our hands right now is a sign of your love for us. We are blessed to be a blessing. And so whatever we're giving this morning is a response of what you've done for us. And we are giving it with a heart of gratitude, saying thank you, Father, because you've increased us more and more and more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as we give, the worship team has a special for us. Why don't you help me make them feel welcome?
Hi, my name is Julius Raymond Kabugo and I'm your chairman for Harvard Mad Purpose Cooperative Society Limited. I'm here first of all to thank you so much for the wonderful job you guys are doing. First of all to being members to HMC but also save every, 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 every month. Uh, the Bible in Proverbs 13, 22 says that a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. I believe that this is the way, this is the vehicle we are using to make sure that our children inherit great stuff in the years to come. Well, uh, HMC has made progress. We've made savings, we've bought land. Hi, my name is Daniel Ajena. I am the head of the investment committee of the Harvest Cooperative and I'm also the vice chairperson of the executive committee. As a business owner, you can actually own this land as a person as well as through your business. Your business can also buy a piece of land. And what are the benefits? As an investment, this is something that appreciates in value. So your business will be able to gain that increase in the, in the price that you can convert by selling the land maybe at a certain time in future. The other advantage is that you can use it as security to access credit services. As you know, HMZ is always coming up with different products and there will be more coming through that can benefit your business. We believe that the only way we are going to break uh, the back of poverty, the backbone of poverty, is by working with businesses, partnering with businesses, attracting them into our space, serving with us, but also using the money we have to do something different. We are also coming up with the products like uh, LOP, LOP of financing, invoice discounting. Our team is doing a lot of things to make sure that we can be relevant to businesses. We already partnered with some of the businesses to enhance their service provision. We have around 17 businesses that are serving with us, but our target is to have more than a thousand businesses serving with us. We believe that if we partner with a thousand businesses, each of them perhaps employing 10 people, we have 10,000 people employed. That would be a great impact, and I believe you love it if you know that your money is actually contributing to employment creation, is contributing to paying off taxes to government, is contributing to doing a lot of things, especially in society. So I'm going to share with you the things that we are doing as HMC to support businesses. We've had engagements, we've had meetings, we've held conversations with guys, and they are very happy uh, to partner with us. So join me today to do this together. Let's see how we can create more kingdom businesses for the kingdom, for God, for society, for the transformation of the spiritual, social, and economic renewal of our people. See you soon. Welcome to Business Garage, everybody. Welcome, it's a great delight and pleasure to be here with Chairman Julius Kabugo of the multi-billion for now, but multi-trillion soon. Harvest Multipurpose Cooperative Society. So, uh, if you are not yet in HMC, you are the only one now. Please share the link. Uh, I'm going to be like Pastor Jose today, so this is serious. You don't want anyone to miss this opportunity because this is a great, great opportunity. So share the link, share the link, share the link as we get started. Thank you for joining us, those who are joining us on YouTube, those who are joining us on Spirit TV, those who are joining us on CTV, those who are joining us on uh, Facebook, Twitter Spaces, and... Harvest Radio, it's the clearest online radio that I have ever listened to in my whole life, and it works excellently. Chairman, welcome. Please uh, send greetings. Uh, thank you so much, Apostle. When I was coming, I intended to send you greetings. <laughs> <laughs> you can I, still I, send them. I will receive I, uh, them. I send you greetings, and I want to thank you so much, uh, for the opportunity to lead. Uh, recently, when you were celebrating your birthday, I just thought of um, what message should I send you. And what came into my mind was, um, it's in Proverbs, that train up a child, I think it's 22, train up a child the way they should go. They should go. And I just felt that you're training us in a way 
that you want us to be, to go, to become, and do things. And the incredible stuff all of us out there are doing is because of you being a good father. So I send you greetings. Aww. Thank you so much. And it's such, um, we are so blessed to be led by you and to serve under your leadership. But I send greetings to Revma here. We love you. I send greetings to my wife. She's over there. Come on now. And our children, uh, Gabby and Ryan, this morning my son told me that the weekends are so short before <laughs> you realize you're going back to school. And I understood. I'm following a very fast man and I felt he's, he's a victim of that speed. <laughs> but it will be fine. And I send greetings uh, to... About the weekend, let me interject there. One of my family members told me as we were driving to school this week, I will not reveal who, uh, and he was saying, Daddy. Apostle, you have revealed the person. <laughs> <laughs> and he was saying, they were saying, they were saying, Daddy, can you imagine what it would be like if it was the reverse? where we went to school two days <laughs> and had a weekend of five days. <laughs> I was like, some people have revelation. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So well, I, I can understand yeah. one of the members who says the weekends are too short. Are too I short. agree entirely. <laughs> they are too short. But, Apostle, I send greetings to the HMC leadership, the incredible team. I know some of them are here. Uh, in a special way, I send greetings to Franklin. Franklin is on maternity leave. She gave birth to a baby girl, Ruby. I know she's watching. We love you. Thank you so much for setting a very strong foundation uh, for HMC and doing a lot of work, a lot of uh, stuff that she has done. And of course, everyone, our ambassadors, we are, we are restructuring our system, our uh, management structures from cohorts now to networks. So we are going to have network ambassadors this is being, serious. leading um, uh, cluster ambassadors, leading location ambassadors, going down to the structure. Literally, we are aligning uh, to the structure, to the system of wow. the movement. Yeah. So we send greetings. I send greetings to all of them and looking forward to this. Hey, this is serious. Now, in, in his book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, John Maxwell in one of the laws talks about the fact that uh, people trust the leader first before they trust the vision. Uh, I don't know who remembers what the law is, but it is there. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's like everyone can have a big vision, but first let, we need to know the person saying these words, can they be trusted? So I think we, we first need to know a little bit about Julius Kabugo's business background. How, how did you become this passionate about business, businesses, business people, helping equip people economically to make sure that they make progress? Um, my journey is quite long. I, I think when I, by the time I was in primary four, I was a shop attendant in my father's shop. Uh, and I'm, I'm the only one who has trusted with this responsibility of selling, uh, taking the money back home, counting, and taking it back to my father every night. P4. P4, primary four. Primary four. four. Yes. You were running a shop. I was running a shop, our family business at the time. And uh, that's when I was introduced to business. And I remember our mom used to... I send greetings to all the parents... <laughs> and all your primary four and above children and <laughs> all the what they are running at the moment, including myself. Let's go. Oh, yeah. So I remember at some point our mom used to, I think she was trying to protect me, and I didn't like that protection because she thought I needed to be more at home than at the shop. And our dad thought that was the right thing for me at the time. And I enjoyed, I think I did that work until P7 when I had to go to... Uh, to the boarding school for the first time. And that's how, that's how I was introduced to businesses. And of course, during my secondary school days, I also did business. One of the things I used to do is to wash clothes for those 
young people who didn't know how to, cro to wash, of course for money. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a service, you have to pay me. Yeah. And then also, um, I was a barber. We had this guy who used to come with a machine at school for, of course, his private use. And I quickly saw that I could make some money out of that machine. So after class, I would, I would go get some kids who needed the service, take them to the dining hall, do the work. They gave me some money. I take a portion of it. I give the one of the machines some money. Higher uh, as equipment, well. higher. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> For the equipment, higher. So all my secondary days, I was doing some kind of business. But of course, when I joined the university, it kind of changed because uh, my university days was a lot of work in a way. Sometimes I should travel from Kawempe to Mobs. I kind of got into the university, I would say, by, by, by chance. Mm. Uh, what happened is uh, when we started senior six, um, I could not get university entry, um, government sponsorship, that is, on the first selection. At the time, of course, our parents had passed on. I didn't have anyone to pay my fees. Uh, and in my mind, I was like, it's over until after some time. The plan was to get to Kampala, do some work, get money, and go back to school. Now, that's the time when MOBS introduced new courses, business computing, Bachelor of Business Entrepreneurship, Bachelor of Information and, uh, Information and Office Management. So I applied because I had some good marks. And they offered me an, um, a, a, a vacancy. Uh, on government sponsorship. But I didn't know that I had been offered this vacancy by the time I was in the village. So I had met a friend of mine, again, Paul Karumba, who you have met yes. during the vacation, and he had a contact number of my aunt where I stayed for some time during the vacation. So he called them and told them that this guy was given a vacancy, but we can't see him at the university <laughs> because I didn't know. <laughs> so, wow. so my aunt sent my cousin to get me from to come and notify me. I remember I didn't have money for transport. So I went to my, my grandma, uh, who passed on a couple of years ago, and I told him he was in his plantation, Banner Plantation. Say, I need to go to Kampala. I'm told I've been admitted to the university, so I need transport. You know those old ladies normally carry money in there, and they are according to the message, what you call yeah. So I just saw her dipping her hands into, into her bank account. And bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Poor people, they are not done as refugees. So, and she gave me, uh, I think it was 10K. Wow. I jumped onto the next tax available, came to Kampala. I went to Makere University, walked around, checked everywhere. I could not find my name. It was the most disturbing three days of my life. Because I felt this whole thing was back up. I checked, I checked, I couldn't. Until after three days, actually I'd given up. I intend to go back to the village. I meet one of my OBs. So as we chat, he tells me, so what are you doing here? I'm like, you know, my friend told me, I, I was given this admission, but I can't find my name on, on the notes board. I've checked offices. No one seemed to know about me. He said, no. You should go to Nakawa. Mobuz is in Nakawa. Mobuz is not here. I didn't know where Mobuz was. <laughs> so All along, you were on Makere Main Campus. I was campus, in Makere Main Campus. Looking for your name on the notice And I spots. walked. I checked all corners. So, by and the time it tells me... There was me, no WhatsApp those days. No WhatsApp. I didn't have a phone. Yeah. Uh, the phone the phones had come, but I didn't, want, I didn't have one. And they didn't and have screens. They, was, they, no one could take, take a picture of anything. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Now, by the time he tells me this, I have no money to go to Nakawa. Yes. But I knew I'd come for my admission. So I walked to Nakawa. And when I reached the North Board, my name was there. Come on now. Oh. My name was there. I'll never forget uh, full names, Reggie number 2911. That was my number. And I walked to the registrar's office. Mm. very confident, very happy, hopeful. She told me that you're so lucky because if you had not come today, we are going to give this vacancy to another person because we waited for you, we tried to reach you, we didn't have any contact. So that's how I got wow. my admission into mobs. And of course, they had a life set in. I didn't have nowhere to stay. 
So I had to go and stay with a cousin in Kawempe who could not afford my transport. So I had to walk uh, from Kawempe to, to MOBS, MOBS every day to, to study. And I was waiting for government. Because the government used to give us some living allowance. Yeah. But that would take like months. Boom. I have to open up an account for the first time. I opened up my account and said, Nali Bank is still there, still working. Um, the money came, I think, around six months after. Uh, that's when I shifted to go to what is called TC, where we buy Chukumi Chukumi, some, some, come, some place. Now it's developed, and then it moved in. But before that, I used to work. One of the things I love so much is accounting. Mm. I love accounting. I did it at all level, passed it highly. I, I think it's one thing you wake me up and ask me double entry or anything, and I'll have, I'll have the things with me off my fingertips. So we had this lesson early in the morning, around seven, eight. Accounting was accounting. early morning, yeah. And I needed to be, to sit in the front, because for me that was my future. It meant that I had to walk from Kawempe get to mobs before anyone. The class was so big before anyone to get my front seat. And wow. indeed, uh, for the time I was working, I always got my front seat because I got there before the students who, who stayed who around the Kamwes and, and, and of course that area. <laughs> yeah, so uh, did university. I remember one of the lecturers coming to career master, I think it was career guiding uh, principal. It tells us, you guys, First of all, your courses are new. If you read, pass well, we are going to retain you. He said, what? Yeah, we're going to retain you if you get a first class upper degree or first class. You stay here and teach. I said, this is a job. Yeah, I have to go for it. <laughs> for me, I felt like my being in the universe was an interview. Rather, yes, was a job interview. Yeah. I said, I'm going to read. Get this first class or this second class upper degree they want, I must teach. This is, my, this is going to be my first job. So I read, really read, and I, I was the best in my course. Come yes. on now. Yeah. Hey. I was, I dropped the class. Unfortunately, by the time they contacted me for the appointment, uh, years before, I had got a job with URA. URA was looking for performing students to go and help them with their financial management systems and I was lucky enough to be one of those who they selected. So they offered wow. me a job before my graduation. And I remember the university calling me, you, you know, you must come. You must first turn down the appointment before, uh, before we give it to another person. I said, but I have another job. Just give it to another person. No, no you must come. I went, did the interview. Uh, they gave me the appointment kept it home, went back to my job, and I think the job was given uh, to another person. So uh, I went to URA, worked with URA, just got in at the time of the restructuring of URA, mm. and uh, the able leadership of Miss Allen Kajina, a very incredible leader, and we did amazing things there as well. Come 2011, cases started, and in the law, government had provided that KCCA would go to URA and identify some people to come and support the setting up of the institution. Yeah. So in finance, I think according to the leadership, I was the most qualified. And then they sent me to uh, KCCA, yeah. where I became a consultant. I didn't believe I was one, but Jennifer Msi believed that I was. <laughs> I believed that I was. Because for me, I was like, you know those young people? I was really young, I was 29, and she was telling us, you are a consultant. I said, no, but you, know, you are a consultant. Okay, whatever you call us. We'll so go. you worked with uh, Mrs. Jennifer Mc Yes, I worked with Mrs. Jennifer Mc directly. Yeah. Uh, came through to becoming the director of treasury services. Hey. And in 2019, I quit to come into this world. But before 2019, <laughs> around... <laughs> Around uh, September 2018, I just felt God telling me that I want you to do more. Mm. I want you to do more. I think you can do something much more than what you're doing. Yeah. And we had set up systems. We had staff. We had trained leaders who could take up, take up, take on what we are doing. So I went to Jennifer Mrs. home in September, and I told her that 
you know, I think my time has come. She said, what do you mean? I said, I need to leave. Go mm. where? I said, do you have a, another job? Do you have a better job? I said, no. I am going to, into business. Have you set up one? I have not set up one, but I've started setting up something. I just feel I can do so much more out there and I can help more people. I can employ more people. I feel I have the what it takes, not in terms of for my own benefit, but doing something more significant. Wow. And of course she refused. She said, that can't happen. For as long as I'm here, you're going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to stay here. Perhaps you wait. While some people are being threatened with being fired, well, <laughs> uh, other people are being threatened by if you try to leave. I know. Uh, so, uh, uh, which category are you? Let's continue. <laughs> So that was, uh, that was September 2018. And I felt really that uh, it, it, I just didn't like the decision, obviously, but Jennifer was more than my boss. Mm. She was like my mom mm. to this end. And of course, I had to, to, to obey to stay, her instructions. Yeah. But God is so kind that in December 2018, she offered to leave. Mm. So whereas some people were sad, I felt my moment had come. <laughs> <laughs> That's when the door opened. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I remember when we were preparing a high exit, I was one of those who really put in a lot of energy uh, so she could live well. Yeah. And she left in December 2018 and I had to stay for a couple of months. I'm going to get back to you yes. about that because mm. uh, for those who've lived in Kampala a few years, they know that there is like a remarkably different world from when Mrs. Msisi became KCCA director to the world before that. In terms of just what the city looks like, everything. So I'm going to come back to you that because I, I think that everyone in the audience and online there are certain principles or there are certain things we could learn from your KCCA days because we, we all just sort of saw it from the outside, but we have opportunity to have someone who was a part of it on the inside, and I think you're going to teach us some things. But part of the reason I wanted to, to share your journey, uh, and the people online have been so kind, Mrs. Jean Kawesa, we send you greetings and others, they've told me what the law is, the one I couldn't remember. It's law number 14 in the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. It's the law of buying. People buy into the leader before they buy into the vision. And for me, I really feel like we are very, very privileged to have you as the chairman of Harvest Smart Purpose Cooperative. Uh, because people, the, most people just don't know the kind of leader they have in that organization and the kind of experience you have and your background and how you didn't fluke your way into whatever it is. It's like every door God has opened for you, however small it looked, you've walked into it. You walked to, to class, to top the class. While those who were driving there or just living next door didn't have the results you had. You were given a job in one of the top institutions in the nation before graduation and from there you went to yet another one and for you to leave those very you know I
all of us recruited our own teams. She, didn't, she just didn't get involved. She told you, I've given you this mandate. Identify who you're going to work with. Now, the purpose of that was to hold you accountable, very high accountability, because if she needed something, you could not come and tell her, I am sorry I can't perform because of this kind of person. And of course, her next question would be, who brought in that person? And of course, that was you. So there's no room uh, for nothing less than excellent. The other thing is she was very excellent. When I remember our first days in office, when she was setting up our office, of course, we are spending some money. You see when a leader is spending money on office, buying a new furniture, and I was like, but, but I think she's extravagant. This is too much. You know, for you, we finance guys. Buying what? Yeah, this is quite a lot. Until I visited her home. I learned when I visited her home that her leaving her home to come and lead us and transform KCCA was, she was actually helping us. Because her home was too good to leave to come in our environment. <laughs> When I got there, I just sensed, I said, we are so lucky to have this kind of person coming every morning to leave this comfort, to come and serve, and a lot of challenges, abuses, um, threats to, to her life, her children, and so, and so on and so forth. So that's when I learned. But also I realized that she wanted everyone in Kampala to live a life she was living. That's what I saw. Starting with that team, and everyone in the city. She wanted everyone, so she was trying to actually bring her home, the beauty in her home, into the city. The green, the flowers, the lights, the things that you guys used to see was mm. exactly what was in her home environment. So she was just transferring the, the, that excellence, the thing that she was having, and then pour that uh, into the people. But going back to perhaps one answer to Apostle question, it's leadership. Yeah. Everything rises and, and falls, falls on, on a leader. She was such an incredible leader. Wow. I like to tell people that, uh, especially when we are dealing with finances, that the same head hmm, that manages or mismanages the money at home is the same head that manages or mismanages the money in the business or the money at church. It's not different heads. So no wonder she was trying so much to help other people have the same experience because that's what she had at home. I think uh, when, when I see sometimes how certain people treat public property or public things, I think it's just exactly that's what's happening at home. So uh, they're just bringing that experience of rubbish. Rubbish at home, rubbish at church, rubbish at work, rubbish in the class, and more rubbish. But thank God... <laughs> Now let's move on to have a multi purpose cooperative. Yes. Tell us more. Now you are the, you're the man, you're the chairman. Yeah, what, what, what is your desire for us? Uh, because I know you're not broke. I think you're trying to do this Jennifer Mississippi thing. You're like, all these people who don't have anything, how can I help them? <laughs> yes. Uh, Apostle, when you. you, you you invited me to your office. That was January 2021. And you told me that I need you to lead this organization. By then it was Harvest Investment Club. Club. Yeah. Um, I understood then that you had a desire and certain kind of direction you wanted this organization to go. And you needed that change. Mm. So I got the assignment very, very, very clear at the time. I remember you mentioned that we have around 5,000 people. I think that's what we had at the time, as far as I remember. And he said, can you imagine if 2,000 people join this organization and each save 100,000 shillings per month? Yeah. Julius, that would be 200 million, and that's 2.4 billion. I said, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, that's true. And I remember telling that possibly we are going to do it. Yeah. I'm happy to inform you this morning that this month of March 2022, only one year later. We are collecting 200 million this month. Hey. Yeah. Come on now. Yes. Delivering on the vision, on, on the, the vision. promise. Yes. 
So our members uh, are collecting 200 million. We challenged them and they have lived to the challenge. And I sincerely want to thank you, all of you, where you're watching from, those of you who are here. Thank you. Thank you for responding to the instructions of our Father. Because what I tell you, they're not my instructions. And I always tell my team, I'm only delivering messages to you. I get their instructions and I bring down them to you. But I'm so lucky that they have been uh, obedient. We have grown as an organization mm. from 200 members and 500 million in 2021. That was Feb. Feb 2021, we, we had 200 members. Yes. 500, 500 million. 500 million. It's now March. To now over 1,200 members and <laughs> over 2.3 billion as of this morning. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yes. So when we say we are multi billion, we are not just, it's, we, not, it's not a statement of faith. Absolutely. <laughs> Yes, and we're going to do uh, a lot more. I've been telling, I learned recently, I think the other week, on Business Leaders Network, uh, Raymond, a friend of mine, was presenting, and he said that logic will take you from one step to another, but imagination will mm. take you too far. Mm. I learned then that my leadership is about imagination. I don't use logic. And I tried to put it in a spiritual terms. I understood that imagination is faith, mm. spiritually. Yeah. It is faith that belief, the things you don't see and you believe that you're going to get there. Yes. So we are now imagining to be a 10,000 membership organization by the end of this year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, collecting 1 billion a month. per month. That is our target. Yes. That's our target. And we're going to get you joined. The people who have not joined, perhaps that's not your problem. It's our problem. It's our strategy, it's our tactics that are not working, but we are, we are not seated. We are thinking every day, how do we get into your spaces? So we, you're telling them we are coming for you. We are coming for you. <laughs> 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 Last year, we had around, we had, I think, around 700 members, and only 300 were saving. According to our bylaws, if you don't save for three months, you're supposed to quit. Mm. And one of the meetings, my team tells me, you know what, I think we need to let people go. Like, where are they going? That was after when you visited our home. I don't remember that scripture, but you shared and said, God wants us to present people perfect. Yeah. We're the perfect. We perfect and present them to him. And I said, oh, we're supposed to make sure everyone saves. So after that meeting, we called everyone, say you must save. Those who didn't have money, we prayed for them. Hey. Uh, yes, we prayed for them. <laughs> this is the best investment. And by, <laughs> by the end of the year, 93% of our members were actually serving. Wow! Yes. We are actually serving. And, and they are going from through. below 50% yes. to 93%. To 93%. Saving culture. Serving. Serving. And therefore, in the same way, we are coming for you. Those of you who have not joined, we are coming for you. You must join. This is for you. This is for, for your children. But also, there are so many things we are looking at. Of course, our members are serving. They are earning money, which is a good thing. We gave out a very good return this year. I think we paid the best return in the country. I'm trying to find out who did. If well anyone did. did better than us. Yeah. I'm, 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 Tell I'm, us I'm, the return. <laughs> let, let it not be a mystery. I'm struggling to find anyone. But we, pay, we gave a return of 20% 20, 20 on savings and 22% on, on shares. On shares. Yes, that's what we paid out. I can confirm that... Uh, it reflected on my Harvest Smart Purpose Cooperative account. Absolutely. Thank you. Now, just for, for clarity, those who might not know, it means if you had a billion in Harvest Smart Purpose Cooperative, they gave you 200 million. That's so. Yeah. Yes. That, and because I teach investment, I want people to understand this. Imagine that you had a net worth of a billion shillings in different things this here, this, and you liquidated everything, and you got all the money and put it in Harvest Small Purpose Cooperative. Then they give you 200 million. All you need to do is reduce your living costs to within 200 million a year, and you'll never need to work again, ever. That, that's all you need to do. And that's 200 so. million a year is about 8 million a month. 
when spread out. Mm. And you will never need to do another job ever in your life. Okay. It's as simple as, as that. that. And yes. I, I intend to have my passive income exceed my expenses in the next two to three years. That's why I am in the priority savers group, group. of Have a Smart Purpose Cooperative. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Apostle. And you've been consistent. Oh, yeah. I, I, watch, you, I watch your account a lot. You've been very consistent. <laughs> <laughs> and, and recently you signed up the children. Yes. Thank you. All my Thank family you. members are now members Everyone of is. HMC. Thank you. I should, the credit goes to my wife. She's the one who manages oh. the children's accounts. Thank you so um, much, Revna. Yes. Yes, I suppose. So, uh, that's the direction we are taking. But now, we have a very um, big question. And just a, a little bit of mm -hmm. clarity. Uh, those who are watching, the sign-up uh, link is on YouTube, but it's also, you can actually copy it. If you are listening to us on radio, it's bit.ly forward slash HMC individual sign up. HMC individual sign up. You have to remember all the spellings. Individual sign up. HMC is H M C. No gaps. So bit.ly forward slash HMC individual sign up for individuals and HMC Kingdom Business sign up for businesses. Go ahead and, and, and. perhaps to also notify those watching that this is for only worship harvest ministries. Worship harvest ministries and you must belong to a missional community. So you must be a member of Wash Purvis Ministries and in a missional community. So if you're a member of Wash Purvis Ministries and you're not in a missional community, you may have to first join and then join uh, HMC. So Apostle, we, we are now looking at how do we be more relevant to the economy? Yeah. Because we cannot just save and the money and then you got the, that song, you know, again. We think that this house has been placed and positioned to have an impact and effect on the economy of this country. And we are aware that we cannot do this without working with the businesses because they employ people, they produce, they give services, and through that production, that's how the economy grows. In Kenya, they have 25,000 cooperatives. Mm. And they are contributing over 45% to their GDP, to their economy. 45%. They are involved in transport, they are involved in agriculture, they are involved in industry, in real estates, and a lot more. In By the way, when I was in Nairobi, I saw that almost all taxis and buses are owned by, by SACOs, That's cooperative true. societies. All. That's Literally true. all. That's very true. Yeah. And of course, in Uganda, we are also trying. We yeah. have the same number approximately, but unfortunately, we are contributing 2.68% to our GDP. So ours is something different. <laughs> Kenya, they have 14 million people uh, in these cooperatives who are saving. For us, we have around 5.6 million people. But I think the difference is how we contribute. There's a lot of money in the cooperatives but this money is sitting idle because there's no production going on. Yeah. The other week, I had an opportunity to talk to, to present a paper on leadership with the purpose to the investment clubs of DFCO Bank. And I learned that they have over 45,000 clubs. 45,000. And I'm like, what are they doing? Where are they? What is going on? And we think that we can influence on how perhaps they can be more relevant to the economy. So that's why now we look reaching out to businesses to find out how can we work with you to make sure that you're not just, you know, selling and producing and selling to a certain level, but you scale, you do uh, a lot more. The first thing we're doing is we allowed businesses to save with us. And I know those who saved with us last year at least earned some money through dividends and, 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 and income, interest income. That was the first step. We just let you know 
that your business can earn some money without having to invest or without being out there in the field uh, doing uh, anything but rather passive income. I think when we talk about passive income, people think it's individuals, even businesses actually, yeah. can earn uh, passive income. Uh, the other thing we are looking at is partnerships. We are partnering with uh, Goldmine, who is our member, to launch our microcredit product, yeah. where yeah. you're going to use your phone to access some little money at your convenience when you need it. And in doing this, we know we are adding some numbers to Goldmine because as our member, yeah. we are also earning them some little money, but we are sharing into that revenue because we have the numbers, but also we are going to use our money to some extent. And that's how we quickly going to grow uh, yeah. Goldmine yeah. in, that, in that area. And we don't have to invest in technology because they have invested already. Yeah. Apostle have told us to follow, to partner. So this is the path we are trying to, to, to undertake. We are partnering with uh, Ms. Kaya Ruheza to get into the real estate as well, to understand how it's done and how can we do it much better. Yesterday we visited some land in Musika, such a very nice piece of land. I think if the committee allows, we're going to buy around 75 plots of land, which we, which we are going to sell to our members, and it looks really very, very, very good. But we've been struggling to actually access land. We've, been, we've had to stand our people, I remember two weeks ago, I think, my vice chairman was arrested. I was called to go and rescue him. I know he's in the house. <laughs> this is serious. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, he was taken by the brokers, and they told him this land is for sale, so he got onto the land to check out uh, what's going, how, whether we should buy it. Before he knew, he was on gunpoint. People telling him, you're trespassing on land, which you shouldn't be stepping on the first time on the first place. So he's arrested. For some reason, I was calling him. He had sent us some message, and I needed him to, to help me with something. And when I called him, I said, I'm here. I need you to say, you're there, but I'm here. I'm, I'm arrested. I'm under arrest. I said, where are you? He was this side of Mukono. So I had to drive and, and, and get, get him out of that trouble. But because we're dealing with all sorts of people, perhaps, that yeah. may not now know imagine, what you want. So I think people need to know this. When you are a member of HMC, someone else is taking all the inconvenience yeah. and all the risk and all the assessment. In, in, in this case, you will have been the one who is arrested because you wanted to buy the land there. But instead, it is our committee members who are being arrested as they try to make sure that you're not buying Bichupuli or Bichup's land. So th there is advantage in going together. I think they say if you want to go quickly, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with others. And we are going far. And you know that way, 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 way now? They are waiting for a certain date. When now we are flying high, we have our multi storage towers. Tower, 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 tower. tower. That's when they work out. I saw what to do in the HMC. But they will be like 75 years old by that. So don't wait. Yeah, because I, I know how it works, you know, in the beginning stages when it is mostly vision, people don't have capacity to see it. But may God give you the eyes to see so that you, you come in early. Those who come in early get the most out of it. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Apostles. So we, we're doing that and uh, a lot more with the businesses. Yesterday I was talking to... Uh, uh, Mr. Kamara of the Nomad, and he told me he discovered in Ghana that the gentleman, uh, some business leader, built apartments for his employees. Yeah. And they are so loyal to him. So the other product we are give, allowing businesses to engage in is they can access some of our estate for their employees. Mm -hmm. Just as simple as that. Because you are business. our member... Yes, uh, when the business is a member. Exactly. So we have individual members and we have uh, corporate members. Yes. Yeah, like Nomad can be a member, Dagan, yes. Bragan, and all the other global businesses. Yes. Uh, Vine can be members. Amen. Yes. So your business can buy 10, give them to your employees, can even give you a land loan as a business. Yeah. Then your employees pay 
that money back to you over the whatever number of years you can of afford. Their salaries, of their salaries. Of their salaries. work for you. And help them, you know, own land. I would yeah. like to sign up worship harvest. Please. As, as, a, <laughs> as a corporate member, because I want all my, all my employees to yes. have land Absolutely. and to build houses. Absolutely. Yeah. And LPO financing, invoice discounting, we are getting into all that. So the idea is, we want to work with the businesses. That's the point. Because we believe you guys can do a lot. You guys can create employment opportunities for the people. You guys can have more influence on this economy. We want to raise that bar from 2.68% GDP contribution to Uganda's economy to 45%, to 30%, to 50%, and yes. so on uh, and so forth. But at the same time, we need all of us to be part of this initiative. Yep. We need everyone to join. We think that if we have 50 billion in the next three years, we're going to do a lot, a lot much more than what we are doing right now. Wow. Can you appreciate our chairman? Wow, 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 wow. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Time. Who made time? Time is up. And we have to go. But the links are all out there. You just click to join. And in, in case people want to make inquiry, what is the number they call or text to um, make inquiry? Inquiry, please people call with questions. 0704 Say it again. 0704 Yes, to have all your questions answered. And guess what, guys? We are going to do this thing. We're going to do this thing. A friend of ours, Claude Nikondeha, told us when he was here that in a few years, Worship Harvest, and by that, it's not the church, not Worship Harvest Ministries, Worship Harvest, the members, he said will be one of the top 10 economies in East Africa. I agree. I believe and it. And receive it. I believe it. Mm. Yeah. And it's going to happen practically. So stick around, join a missional community, uh, go on evangelism, do your frontier, serve the neighbors, and just watch this happen practically. We are believing that, uh, you know, God has given us a vision to plant 3,000 churches. And 3,000 churches with 3,000 members each. So at a time when we become around 9 million members, how much will our savings be per oh. month? <laughs> <laughs> wow. It will be trillions. Oh, yes. And we'll be investing and changing people's lives all over the region and all over the world. Many people who are watching us online, they are not from Uganda. They are wondering how they can be a part. It's very easy. Go to the same thing. Yes, we have an online missional community. All of that information will come to you as you engage with those links. Because we have members from the UK, we have members from all over the world who are members of HMC. So, thank you so much, Mr. Okay. Chairman. And those who are joining us online, we, we never close the service at Worship Harvest without giving you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Because after all the great investments on earth, we must go to heaven. Uh, I don't want you to invest on earth and then end up in the wrong place. So if you've never done that, I want you to give your life to Jesus. And I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. Forgive me my sins. Take my life and do something significant with it. Amen. If you prayed that prayer from any part of the world, if you send a text to the number that's coming up on your screen right now, uh, 0775-642-449. If you're outside Uganda, please add plus 256-775-642-449. Uh, there is a pastor on the other end of that line and we would love to get in touch with you. God bless you so much. Thank you for joining us. Uh, main garage is coming up at 9 o'clock and see you at 4 p.m. for the Moses Kiss and Friends concert blessings y'all